uh, let's uh, go ahead and get started. Uh, so today we will be discussing lots of situations where one side sacrifices a pawn and then um, or two pawns and then compensation will be, um, well, a very long-term one, okay? The, basically you, you will, um, um, basically you will not really trying to find anything immediately you know you just want to toss the pawn away and then enjoy the long-term initiative okay so that's basically the underlying topic okay and also we will be studying some of the games we'll take a look at some of the games played by uh Ivanchuk all right the guy who is actually uh right now in my hometown and I know him personally and uh, I hope you guys have heard of him at the very least, right? He's been in top uh, in top ten for like twenty five years. Uh, I would I would say. All right. Now now I'm sure he he's uh, retired. Uh, but okay, we will get started then uh, with some of the some of the computer games right here. Okay, and we'll have our first training exercise right here okay so you need to decide how to recapture that knight pawn bishop or queen and then as usual type you type your answers in the chat and then we will discuss all right so i see uh, a few of you have suggested the correct uh, response um well absolutely the best is bishop d4 which is a little bit surprising um normally we would definitely want to take with the pawn but here bishop d4 is even cooler okay so why is that well let's figure this out if uh, bishop d4 then c5 of course and i assume that's why many of you have have said, you know, we're not doing this. But in fact, here, uh, white could be just fine and uh, white could go knight a3. Okay, so knight a3. And the idea is if uh, they take, well, they go a6, and then we have knight c4, and then rook b1. So basically, we just drop that bishop uh, when d4 and uh, attack uh, as, as much as much as we like now just short castle and again it's not quite clear what black uh, what black would be doing here i think black black is just already completely lost and again you don't have to do such sacrifices only if uh, you know if only if you calculated everything through you can easily go for it uh, even if it just looks good enough because uh, nobody nobody will, will be calculating until the very end. It's just not practical. It's not uh, even humanly possible, you know, unless you have a stockfish in your pocket, you know, but other than that, you just can't do it. So if it looks good, just go for it. All right. Okay. Now there's one more question. What are we doing here? Okay, guys, so let's uh, move on. Okay, uh, so here uh, the correct move is uh, CD. Just like uh, in the previous uh, challenge, right? We just don't care about the, the minor pieces. Okay, we just drop them. And, but in, in exchange, we open up uh, the files, right? We open up uh, the game. And I think uh, this one should be quite self explanatory. The next move is Rook F. Uh, C1, we have lots of open files. Everybody's in, in attack, right? And then knight and rook are just completely out. We can also say the bishop on h5 is being completely out. So it shouldn't be a big surprise that white is just simply winning. It's just a matter of time. You see, gradually white keeps uh, getting some, some of the material back. And as usual, uh, as usual, uh, they go to the end games. Okay, there's nothing better than a much better end game. You know, if you only play for two results, um, you'll be a very, very successful chess player. All right, this is game over. All right. Okay, now let's mix it up a little bit with 
games played by uh, Ivanchuk, okay, and take a look at his sacrifices, especially the ones that don't really, uh, you know, jump out. And this game in particular is one of my favorites, although I doubt that that many people know about it. This game was played in the year 2000. Um, that's when I started playing chess, actually, <laughs> right? So actually it even was, okay, so the game is year 2000 and it's July. So that's the month and the year when I started playing chess. So uh, let's take a look. All right, we'll start from here. Uh, by the way, notice that the previous move was a5. So they sacrifice the pawn on d4, right? They don't recapture it, they do something different. This one should be pretty simple. The follow-up will be much more difficult. All right, so I see that uh, the first move, a lot of people are getting absolutely correctly, but then uh, the second move is, you know, for some reason is not right, okay. And actually, nobody got the second move right. Yeah, somehow it's just not happening. All right. Well, in a lot of cases, we're not getting the first move correctly either, you know, but... All right, let me show you the first move. So E4, I thought this one should be more or less uh, self-explanatory. I mean, we, we have to push uh, the knight. Uh, the knight has to be pushed all the way to e1. But then here, somehow, knight b6 was not on anybody's mind. At least uh, I didn't see any anybody typing it. All right. So, yeah, knight b6. Then we take. Take. Now, knight a4. So trying to go knight b2 and then bishop d4, right? Uh, so that's... Uh, Pretty, pretty simple. All right. Now, bishop c3, and here comes the most one of the most difficult parts in this game. Okay, black to move. I see a lot of you uh, suggesting uh, c5, which is not a bad idea, but you can you can uh, do it uh, better. Basically, you can make a certain move, and then and then c5 a little bit later. But it's not it's not immediate c five. All right, uh, I see uh, Aryan got it right. Okay, good job. Uh, so e three. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, so e three, and then uh, so it kind of reminds me of checkers, you know, because everything is on the dark and white has. To to take everything. And maybe that's why now nowadays Ivanchuk is like really into checkers. It's like his uh, main hobby, you know. So now it's c5. And then if they take, then we go uh, knight c3. And you see everything is in the dark. And <laughs> this is this is ridiculous, you know. Uh, the pawn, this is like one of the worst pawn structure one of the worst pawn structures that you will ever see uh, we have isolated we have triple isolated pawns <laughs> on the c file we have another isolated pawn here we have e3 uh, pawn like another isolated ones yeah it's crazy how terrible they are so uh, effectively effectively you can say that uh, if we count pawns properly we can discount two pawns really easily here. So we can even say that, I know it may sound shocking, but we can even say that the material is even here, roughly speaking. All right. You may say, okay, they up three pawns, but what pawns exactly are extras? Like, I don't see it. Like, what is extra, right? They're all so horrible. All right, so knight, I mean, queen d2, the queen comes in. Uh, now here we can take on e3 immediately, but you know, that's not how great chess players play. Uh, we need to go knight g4. So the, the threat is always, uh, stronger than its execution, right? Then queen e3, now knight f2. 
So that's that part is pretty simple. And now black is uh, pretty much uh, almost winning. All right. Okay, and here try to figure out what's next. Black needs to do something effective and finish the game. Nobody got it. Actually, wait a second. No, somebody got it right. Oh, okay. Andy, Andy got it right. Okay, yeah, good job, Andy. Okay, we'll, we'll just give it another 30 seconds or so and we'll keep going. All right. Okay, so seems like, um, well, I see some of you got the first move right, but then um, the second move is not correct. So the first one is rook a4, which honestly should be the first move that you uh, calculate because that's the most forcing move, all right? Now, uh, but the question is what happens if they take back? All right. Well, I guess I guess here Andy ruined the challenge for everyone. <laughs> so, okay. Make sure you private message because uh, otherwise everybody uh, will see what you're typing. Okay. All right. So Bishop H3, and then um, this is it. Game over. Takes Bishop G2, obviously mate in two, and if King G1, then Bishop C3. And then bishop d4, or they lose a queen. So either way, black is winning. So yeah, truly phenomenal game. Uh, you know, triple pawn sacrifice and then slow play. Quite quite impressive. All right. Okay, let's uh, move on. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the okay back to the engine games. Okay, and the ones that we want are right here. Uh, maybe we'll skip this one for now. And we will skip this one real quick. We'll get back to them at one point. Whenever I open this file, it's just the order is always is completely random. All right. Okay, let's uh, uh, do this one. And then we will get to the toughest challenge. Okay, we'll start with something not so difficult. Okay, here it's white to move. I see people are bragging in the, the chat how many games they have. I'm like, guys, I have the whole new newest database, which is like 9 million or whatever that is. Plus, I have a Lee Chess database that is like 15 and a half million games. So... <laughs> So I think you, you <laughs> plus there's the correspondence database that is like 2 million games. All right, anyway. Okay, um, so I don't think anybody, actually, no, we, could, we, we have one correct answer. Um, so rook c1, yeah. Um, is it Seper? Uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm how, if how to pronounce the name correctly, probably butchering it, but yeah, good job. Um, the idea is to go rook c1 and then rook g1. Okay, the, the point is that you need to get the rook into the game. All right, now here comes the difficult part, okay, which I'm um, not sure if it, this one will go too good if if you had issues with rook c1, but we'll still try, okay? We'll, we'll stay optimistic. All right. Um, so try to figure out what can white do in this situation. 
By the way, notice that white is uh, down a pawn, but they just really, really don't care. Okay, in fact, uh, the extra pawn uh, on c7 or c6, well, whichever it is, it doesn't really matter. I'll give you guys a hint, it should be some sort of uh, maneuver. So it's nothing forcing, it's too early for knight uh, g6. Okay, Brian got it. Yeah, good job. Brian and Andy. And Eric now, Eric Leo. Okay, all right, let's take a look at the solution, all right? So the move was bishop c1. Okay, so the idea is to get the bishop uh, to a3, and then the knight on e7 would be pretty horrible, right? Then you may ask yourself, okay, but what if uh, black uh, gets the second pawn on um, d4, right? But in fact, if we count the pawns properly, then we realize that c7 and c6 don't matter. So in, in this situation, we can say the material is um, even, okay? It would not be a stretch by any means, okay? Again, c6 and c7 virtually don't exist, okay? So, and if we discard them, if you really don't care about them, then, um, then yeah, then, then, you know, making moves like bishop c1 would be a lot, a lot easier, all right? And if the rook retreats here, then some sort of knight g6 wins uh, on the spot. It should be pretty simple. All right. Okay, um, going back to our human hero. Okay, Ivanchuk, right here. Okay, we will... Yeah, let's, let's do um, the one against this dude. And the index will be C11. Second. Okay, right here. Okay, let's start with some easy challenges. Okay, so here it's white to move. So you can suggest the move and uh, the plan. Guys in the chat, let's focus on finding some good answers, okay? And chat, like only private message me, okay? Because if it's not related to, to the lecture, then, you know, you can talk about it after the class. All right, so I see that uh, Arvind got it right. Okay, good job. And I see Suren got it right as well. Okay, we'll keep uh, going. All right, so the correct move here was Rook G1. Okay, rook g1 and then g4. Nothing too difficult. Um, you know, it's just a standard idea. You have to go g4. That's like the only viable plan, right? Um, so yeah, nothing too complicated here. All right. Um, yeah, moving on. Now they go rook g1, and this move is quite impressive. So what's going on here... Um, that uh, white sacrifices the pawn on f4 and they don't really care, okay? They just sacrifice it and keep attacking like nothing happened, okay? 
So why why is that? Well, I, I, I'm pretty sure this move was almost like a provocation. You know, they were really trying to invoke um, FG. You know, maybe Black was thinking that White will play knight. I mean, Rook G4, Knight F5, and maybe things will not be so bad. You know, maybe they will still be able to hold. So I'm pretty sure this pawn sacrifice was completely unexpected. And otherwise, I feel like from Black's perspective, uh, capturing on G4 looks like a decisive mistake. Not that Black's position is all that good to start with, but still, you know, um, I feel like they should not be taking it. Maybe some sort of like knight g8. I know it looks really ugly, but maybe knight g8, knight h6, get the rook in. At least try to do something, you know. Taking on g4 was a decisive mistake for sure. And then white just slowly builds up the tension, rook g3, g5. And again, you need to ask yourself where the extra pawns are, right? And so what, g7, h7 versus g5, right? Then the, the question is, will they ever move? Will they ever be promoted or anything like that? Of course not, right? So in that case, we can simply say that material is even. So nothing, nothing really matters. You know, it doesn't matter that nominally they have an extra pawn. It's all the same. Okay, black goes rook uh, f5, which which is probably a good defense. You know, they're trying to at least maybe build some blockade. Now, here the knight on f3 is kind of useless, so they transfer it to e3, which makes a lot of sense, right? Okay. Now they move the king all the way to b2. I mean, white can just simply enjoy and play as slowly as they want, really. All right. OK, and now try to figure out the move and basically the idea how to break through. All right, time's up. OK, um, well, maybe it's just two minutes to think, but you know, I'm trying to cover as many examples as we can. Um, so that's why we kind of going fast. But yeah, uh, the move is rook h7. And I see that uh, Alexander uh, got it right basically before, before I said it. So yeah, rook h7 is correct. Rook h7, then knight g6. And now this is it. Knight f4, rook h6, and game's over. Yeah, this is a complete massacre at this point. Yeah, I'm done. All right. Yeah, this is this is done. All right, moving on um, to the next example. Okay, let me run you through the com computer games real quick as well. Because I prepped so much stuff, it, it almost feels like it's gonna be enough for like one year. But uh, unfortunately, we have like one hour only. All right. OK, we will uh, skip through this. I just wanted to show you that sometimes even the engines play like some uh, funny openings. Like in this case, it was the, the wing gambit. Or as I like calling it, a, a Sicilian gambit. I like Sicilian gambit much better. Um, and I played it, I, I used to play it on a regular basis uh, until I was 2300 feet. Eh? Okay, so, so basically you can play whatever opening you like until a certain level and be completely fine. All right, <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Yeah, I had really great success with it. In fact, my first international master norm that I got when I just turned 12, um, you know, I've been beating international masters with this this move all right one one of the one of the cool ideas here that i discovered only like in 2015 apparently i didn't i had too much free time on my hands and i found this idea e4 and then short castle queen f6 bishop e4 queen a1 queen b3 queen uh 
True. Yeah, queen of six, rook e1, bishop e7, and then a, b. All right. In fact, you know what? You can um, you can use this position as your homework, you know, or just like some extra uh, assignment. You can uh, basically analyze this, try to anal analyze to analyze this position yourself, then with the engine, and then um, come up, I mean, come up with some evaluation and the conclusion, like what's going on in this position and how can black defend. By the way, this, this variation is a really great example that you can even be down the rook, basically, right? But um, you still have, you can still have a great position, even though white doesn't even have any sort of tactics or anything. Um, white is doing great no matter what. Okay. So I, I think the correct evaluation here, by the way, is uh, zeros. Okay. If you like, you can even take a screenshot or something like that. And yeah, definitely, uh, definitely go deeper through this position. All right. Or you can just remember it, obviously. Okay, but uh, going back to the game. All right, there we go. You can obviously uh, analyze this after the class and stuff. No need to do it now. Okay, we'll start with easy questions. Okay, so how do we recapture uh, the bishop, queen or knight? All right, so the correct answer is the queen, okay. Um, so I know lots of uh, people have uh, prejudice. They think, oh, I'm down a pawn. I cannot trade queens. And that's a completely wrong notion. In fact, it's just simply not right. You cannot trade queens if you have a lost position, but being down a pawn doesn't mean that you're losing. All right, so here queen b5 is perfectly fine. If knight takes, then I believe the problem was knight a6 and then knight c5 and something was going on on d3, all right. In this situation, uh, white just uses the precise calculation as you would expect from the engines. Okay, so knight a7, the knight gets to c8. By the way, this is a highly unusual uh, setup with the knights on c8 and knights on b6. Um, I did a search in the mega database and just out of curiosity, I thought I would find like almost no, no games. Apparently I did find some. Uh, so how many, how many positions do you think I found with the knights being on C8 and B6? You can just say a random number, you know, just no need to think too hard. You cannot know precisely. So yeah, it was something like um, a little bit over a hundred, basically. So yeah, um, that's it's been a lot of games. Actually, I just said I, when I was thinking, I, I was I was thinking that it's probably something like you know fifteen or twenty something like that, but no, a lot more apparently. But still, out of nine million, that's not that many. All right. Here it's white to move. Okay, try to find something good. Okay, so time to reveal the correct move. Okay, uh, so yeah, basically uh, you have to go rook a5 here. All right, so rook a5 because the bishop on c5 is clearly the only target that we can even hit, right? Nothing else truly. And then we want to take it and then go bishop a3. It's a quite quite straightforward thing, but you always need to be looking for targets. All right. So now um, now e3, kind of unexpected. I think if pawn takes the knight e4, I would assume. Rook c5, bishop a3. Okay, now where the king should go? 
All right, I guess we can move on since uh, uh, I feel like almost everybody participated. I mean, lots of lots of answers. Um, all right. Um, okay, so the correct move here was king f3. All right, so you, here you, you need to use the method of elimination, right? If you go king e3 and then, well, here black can go like knight e4. They don't even have to take on c3. Well, king e1 just looks way too sketchy. I don't know, it just looks so dangerous. I would not even consider it probably. But king f3 is perfect. And now we have some really cool line here. If rook f2, then um, king e3. And then I believe it was something like this, which again, doesn't happen very often. We have a really beautiful position here. All right. Um, okay, so yeah, let's uh, keep going. Now let's run through some of the examples here. Now in this one, I wanted to show you the White played Evans Gambit. That's why there is no B2 pawn. Okay, everything else is the same, but there is no B2 pawn. And eventually they get to this situation. And the key to this position is to understand that C3 pawn is a completely, well, useless pawn. Okay, we don't even need to protect it. If you go like C4, then black goes bishop A6 and I would say that you know they will they will be able to probably trade the light square bishop and we'll trade a few of our pieces and it's just not going to be fun. So that's why you just need to let it go. And the correct move here was knight f1. Okay, so knight f1, we let it go. And then knight g3. What do you think is the evaluation here, like in decimals? So try to evaluate this position and, you know, say something like plus one or negative one, if you think black is better, for example. You guys remember the scale, right? Like if it's, uh, if it's plus three and more, it means completely winning, right? like between 1.555 and 2.99, it's a winning, but still work to do. Yeah, point, point 0.75, roughly speaking, until 1.55 is uh, much better, like plus over minus. Much better, but not close to winning just yet. All right, so um, a few of you got really close, the correct answer. Um, the, so here, after night of one, the evaluation was 2.21. And then just a few moves later, it was more than plus three. Okay. Um, so yeah, it was, it was just winning for white, basically. All right, now, uh, again, how to count pawns properly. So d6 and d7 are just like one pawn, okay? So we easily discount them to one. And then uh, the other extra pawn is like this one on b6, right? But the thing is, it never moves to b5. And if it never moves to b5, then we might as well uh, discard that pawn too, okay? So it wouldn't be a surprise to say that in fact, the material is more or less even, and white at this point is just um, kind of on a free roll. Okay, so the material is even, so that's the key. All right, the key to understand such positions is to understand that if extra pawns don't move like ever, they don't matter at all, right? Like, do we care if black even, even if they do move, you know, we don't really care, right? 
B5, B4, okay, congratulations. What's next, right? So yeah, now the rook comes in and now this is the end, right? This is pretty much done. Just one, one last uh, question, okay? So you have three different captures, bishop c7, queen f6, and bishop f6. Okay, so try to figure out which one you like the best. Okay, uh, I see, uh, yeah, some of you got it right. Uh, I see uh, Kevin, Austin, uh, Josh, and Angela. And Aryan as well. Yeah, good job. All right, so yeah, queen f6. Okay, this is a good example of uh, relative value of pieces. Again, I hope nobody here uses a pawn system anymore. You know, that's uh, complete beginner stuff. So I hope nobody's thinking rook is five points, bishop is three. Okay, it doesn't really work that way. All right, so here a pretty big mistake would have been bishop c7 because here black can buckle up after knight c5 and then d6 you know still of course it should be much better for white just because again we have uh, pawns and maybe we will in the end game we still will be better but of course it's going to be an uphill battle right far easier is to play queen f6 and then simply promote the pawns right yeah that's that's much better Okay, now uh, let's run through this one. I don't know why, but sometimes chess base has this glitch where it opens the game on a completely random moment. I don't know why, <laughs> why does it do it? But anyway, it's, sometimes it's pretty buggy. But yeah, anyway, uh, so let's talk about this one. So it's white to move. All right, 20 seconds left. You guys still. Okay, 20 seconds left. You guys still have a chance. Oh, actually, more, less than 20. Okay, 10 seconds left. So it's not bishop h6. It's not bishop uh, g5. And it's not bishop d5. Bishop doesn't take anything. All right, we got one more correct answer. Okay, actually two more correct answers uh, from Venkata and Ariane. Okay, so Bishop uh, C1. All right, so a lot of people don't really look at backward moves or like the moves, not necessarily backward, but undeveloping moves. Okay, but it's completely fine with the bishops. Bishops on c1 and f1 are perfectly fine. You don't really need to do much with them. Okay. Um, so the idea here is twofold. First, we're trying to attack the d5, right? And if uh, knight f3, and also we are protecting ourselves against knight f3, because in this case, we can go this way. And no matter, no matter where the knight goes, we're just going to take the knight. All right, so yeah, that was a really cool idea. All right. Um, Rook F8, I see some comments in the chat. Rook F8 could have been a problem. Well, but then we can go King F1 probably, right? So it's not such a big deal. All right. Okay, so then they go Knight F6. And then here we temporarily give up a pawn, right? Then we go back. And then I truly enjoyed this move, bishop d2. It was something quite unique. Bishop d2, like if, if I saw a game of like players rated 1000, I would be like, sure, that's how 1000s play. They just blunder bishops, <laughs> you know? But, um, but yeah, in fact, uh, this is good for, for white. And that's that's crazy. Um, it's just funny that this works out perfectly fine. All right. And now here, uh, White decides, you know what, it's time to... Well, actually, no, I'm not going to tell you what. <laughs> Maybe I will. 
Okay, let's just take one minute here. So what should white play? All right, I see some of you got the correct ideas, but um, the wrong execution, maybe not the most accurate. Okay, actually, Josh just fixed it. All right, maybe I'll reveal the answer. All right, so we we do not need to get married to the king on h4. You know, if you put it there, doesn't mean that it needs to stay there forever. You know, you just go king h3, and now the king decides. You know, it's a good time to get back, back to work, back to the middle. All right, and white wins here pretty easily. And then just a5, and game over. All right. Okay. Um, all right, everyone. I think uh, that's a good stopping point. All right. So hope you learned something. You had some fun. And uh, yeah, see you guys later.